miembro del jurado oficial del Festival de Cine Africano de... To start a conversation, I wanted to ask Demo Hang about his first contacts with the, with the cinema as an spectator, as a, as a member of the audience. To be talking to you about the, um, about the work. Um, I think my first encounter with cinema is um, I grew up in a small city, small town, outside of the capital city. And um, when I was growing up at that time, um, cinema was sort of an event. Um, can anybody hear me well? No? Hello? Can you? Okay. I think people cannot hear me, no? No. It was a delay, it was a delay of the translation. And the question was my first encounter with cinema. Okay. Okay. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I, I can hear you. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, um, um, my first encounter with uh, with a with, with with cinema was. Um, Okay. 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 Um, so my first my first encounter with cinema was in the small small town. Okay. Just a second. Do I have to wear this now? Because I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, because I can hear you. Okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> Good start. Good start. Okay. Um, so my first encounter with cinema was um, in the small uh, 
town hall where they used to project 16 millimeter films. Um, <clears throat> and um, so at that time, the cinema was sort of an event. It was like a big event. Um, just like football, you have a crowd of people who want to watch football. Um, so cinema was a part of the of the whole ritual of people all gathering together, talking about films. Even before the film comes out, people are already talking about it or narrating it. Or maybe even when the posters are up, people are already talking about what we're going to see, the coming attraction. So I grew up within that space of of where it's very much of a culture, where it's it's much ingrained in what every pe everyday people do is to watch cinema. And um, there was this abandoned hall that um, during the weekends they would clean it up, and then they would project uh, these films there. And I used to go there pretty much religiously every weekend. Um, but my first encounter was actually with the sound of it, because sometimes you don't have a fee to go in or you have, so you can only, if you have a small amount of money, you can go after the interval, the second round, which is the last part. So most of the time I'll spend the half part of the movie, the first part of the movie outside listening to, 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 to what's going on, um, to listen to the film. So I think this is where my imagination was forged. And I remember that when I felt, when I start to see now the images, it, it, it was not, they didn't meet my expectation of what I thought it was happening in there. And I think the, this process of imagination, that's where it sort of started to be forged. And eventually, um, I think I started to automatically feel like this is where I belong in that way. Ahí, eh, eh. All of us, Tilid, Tom and Betty, you know, Tiril, due to his sage when he started going to the movies in Columbane, in his little town, he would stay outside the cinema because he couldn't go inside because he, he wasn't old enough and he didn't have enough money. And sound was the main learning point for him. And that's very interesting because we're talking about two self-taught filmmakers because they did not study in, in movie-making schools. And what I wanted to ask you, what I wanted to ask them on is about your relationship with literature. If it did, during the foundation moments of you becoming a director, did literature play an important role? Because those of you that know his his uh, work, you know the the the, the value of, of words. Is um, I think um, um, the I, I, so many of us from Lesotho we grew up with a very strong overall literature or whether it's oral poetry. And uh, my, my grandmother used to tell us the stories about the folklores, about uh, the legends, about um, particularly, there's another story called Mashina Sankatana. It's about the man who sort of, he wrestled with the big snake that is swallowing the whole community. And I think these are stories that sort of made me or maybe uh, gave me different perspective, uh, or maybe seeing words as a, as, a, as a tool in that way. But at that time, it wasn't a tool, but it was something that was, I was fascinated about. And also very much of a poetry of um, <clears throat> whether it's our songs or whether it's, uh, it's the, the poems or war poems that people will recite pretty much every, in the, in the, when, they, when they're in the fields, or when they're just working on the roof of, like there was a neighbor of mine who used to work on the roofs to fix the roofs. And every time he will sing the song or recite this poetry with such a, a deep voice, um, it feels almost like a Japanese uh, style of singing with the, with the throat. Um, and I was fascinated about this man because every time he comes uh, to our home to fix the, the roof, we, you will hear his singing from far away, 
like reciting the story uh, from far away. And this was, was very impressionable to me as a child. Um, and one of the thing in resurrection, you, you, there is that man with the, who sings with a deep voice or recites this recitation of poetry with a deep voice. It was uh, mirroring that moment in, in my youth. So everything pretty much um, evolved from there. Um, and I remember when I was even growing up, I was never fascinated with filmmakers. I was more fascinated about the prophets or, 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 or poets from my, from my community. Um, and I think it evolves from there. These are the people that I really appreciated. And I liked the text because they were in between almost like a prophecy but yet it was praise song um, or was uh, something to praise the valor or, or the, the, the bravery or the, 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 or, the, or, the, the, or the hero songs. And this was very much impressionable for me. And I think it informs my writing from get go. Mm. Very interesting, this relationship between literature uh, and cinema of Le Mans. Continuing with the previous uh, steps to the making of these movies that have been shown uh, in this African movie festival, I wanted to ask you about a particular moment that I suppose it could, uh, it was very important for you, which was your, your arrival to Berlin and the creation of the Barefoot Cinema and of the group Mokoari. I wanted to ask you if you could explain what did this group on this movement involve and what was the goal uh, in terms of the movie make of the movie making aim was to was to create a, 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 a I, when i made this film it was based on agency a strong agency a strong a sense of it needs to be done now and now with films, you have to wait for like a couple of years to develop the films. But I still believe that there are other ideas that can only function within short space of time of conception, that it needs to be done. It's such an agency that needs to be done. And this was the idea of, of creating this sort of a, a movement or group of people with intention to create something with such immediacy. Um, and if you look at the mother, it's, it, I feel like some of the um, uh, uh, maybe ideas, like things like maybe lament or outcry or outbast, they request an agency, um, an agency of an hour, sort of a, um, a feel. Um, it's almost like you are creating it under a gun or under a great uh, stress. And if you wait, it, they, they start to change. The, the more you wait, the more you share the script, the more you lose your original fingerprints. And I wanted to create a, a sort of a, a group that can leave only their fingerprints, only their puke, only their excrements, and just vomiting on, on the screen or on the page and leave it as it is. So this was the idea of creating uh, this sort of a, a, a m m sort of a movement or group or cooperation. Yeah. Um, after making a couple of long movies that were never released, I saw a couple of a few short movies in 2019. Le Mans came out with Mother which is a poetic uh, trial that is full of uh, rage and fury, abstract, and with a number of emotions that, are, that can be expanded anywhere in the world, that can be connected to anywhere in the world. And I think that was a starting point for anyone that wants to know your work. If you guys agree, let's take a look at a little clip of the movie and then we can continue talking about it. You. 
imagine me. Then me. I was twelve. That morning, you were standing in front of me in that blue dress, the flowers, yellow. Are launching this 
this visual project such so hypnotizing so captivating which i think evokes a number of elements that are very personal and that also that are reach a global scope that that can um i i i wrote a a, a, a sort of a, a parable it like a just a sketch of a character who is um sort of a herbalist um and this herbalist would go to the mountains and and and, and find this herbs it's for his skin and he will dream where the where he can find the herbs um where its roots and everything he will dream of landscapes and then he will have this herbs and makes a beautiful mix just for the people to come and see or to come and buy in the marketplace um and then he will start to summon all the people to come together so he can share this knowledge that he has and once he starts speaking the the he start to puke the the frogs and the excrements and the locusts will just flood out and people will run away that he will have nothing to say because it was too disgusting to to behold or to even be near the person and that's the sense of also of the language that I, I start to realize the, the, the puke or the of this agency of an hour of saying exactly how you felt at that very moment. It's the language. Of course, with time you develop it, you fought in a different way, but also at that time I was in a place where I felt like there's a language that can come naturally through me when I puke my rage because I was full of um, I think I was full of anger. And I was full of fear in a way. And because I, I was traveling a lot of um, African countries around that time, and I, I, it was, was one of the most beautiful experiences and meeting the most beautiful people I ever met in my life. And also there was a, another ugliness of it. It's almost like this, there was one blanket around the continent that I see it all weaved together. It's like almost like a snake, a big snake that is weaving all together. And also even in the film, I wanted to commit the transgression of seeing it as a country, not as a continent, because of that blanket that I was moving around it. I was weaved within it. I see the trials, the tribulations, but yet even the utmost beauty. So it was this, uh, paradox and that I am the paradox. I live in Europe and I'm a walking paradox of this. And I, for many years, I uphold the godlike, or not even the godlike, but I uphold the image of an, a, 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 of the, of the, of the, of a likable African men. And this was my prison. I was suffocating. And I remember I was so proud to walk my dog in the park and past the truck dealers that the kids will see me and say, well, there's another alternative of a black man or of a, of a black person in Europe. So, and this was my suffocation. I was a prisoner of this um, upholding a good person. And also in the, in, in, at the same time, I was trying to be individual. I was trying to be my own person and not seeing as, a, as just an African who came here to do this and this. And it took me a long time to revolt against that. <laughs> That's why even in Mother, it says, you know, you, I, I've had encounters where people say, oh, you don't, you don't, you look, you're not like the other Africans. As if it's a compliment. And before actually, for a second, I thought, wow, I feel special. I feel seen in the way I want to see myself which it's of course has a lot to do with, you know, the self-loathing, but also the self-loathing, it, it's based on many other things that are impressed on you. Um, and I was fighting against this. And also I didn't have a belonging anymore. Like I'm a part of Berlin, but I don't belong there. I go to Lesotho, um, I belong there, but I'm not a part of it. It's like this thing that the earth is forever shifting beneath your feet. It's almost like your identity is shifting all the time. The loss of it. Um, and all this all came together as a sort of, sort of I, I like to see this love that is expressed very much backward. 
with such a rage, with such anger, with such a violence. And at that moment, I felt the need to put something down and to just puke out of the, out of out in the in the in a page and 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 create sort of a symbol that represents my what I feel at that very moment. I wanted to ask about an aspect that I think is fascinating about the movie, which is the rhythm, the structure. We're talking about a movie which which is which shows that slow motion, those hypnotic qualities of the movie. And I wanted to ask Lemoine to which extent before starting to film, it was very clear to you how you wanted to shoot certain things and whether when you went to the edition table, you had a lot of material or if, on the other hand, this was pretty raw and you didn't have to edit at all. How did you find or which was the order that you gave those images? How did you live with those images? How did you kind of try to manage that internal chaos? And how did you were able to portray the chaos that they, the, the, the movie tries to, to portray? How do you find some kind of a structural chaos, if you would allow me to use that term? Yeah, um, m most of the time I, I, I create from, um, from a very subconscious place. Um, in the first stages of, of my process is just to, to, to not question what I'm doing. And it's later that I can rationalize what it means or what I feel like it speaks to me. Some of the stuff that are yet to speak to me, they haven't spoken to me yet, what is it about? But there is a sense of that uh, image that I have in my head that I feel like it represents the feeling that I have. So maybe instead of saying sub from subconscious place, I create from the feeling. And it always starts with the montages or starts with a sequence that I don't know what actually means. And sometimes I try to negotiate with people who are involved to describe them what they mean so they can understand exactly what they mean. But since uh, I think my training, it comes from not questioning anything, just letting the image take uh, its own, their own life. And somehow they're very clear. I'm very particular as well. I'm very um, meticulate. Like I know exactly how it's supposed to be shot. I'm not just going with the camera. Sometimes I do go with the camera and say, okay, I let life be. But for me, what I mean is that I'm, I'm, it's, it's a very clear picture that I have. And I, I try to execute the way it is in my head without questioning it. Because um, uh, 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 for, for, uh, I've, I've always somehow um, I find very interesting when um, like there was a newspaper that I read about this work that talks about especially the sequence with the, with the grass they can somehow um, anchor them or connect them or locate them to their to political cause or to political problem. But I don't create from that place. I, I purely create from be, be, being faithful to the ideas. And I've always believed that they will take care of me, that they will mirror my place. Even if I always feel like I create from Basotho that are not born yet, but yet I always, um, I have a sense that they will anchor me to a current or to a or to a current dialogue. So, so in, in that way, I have a faith in, in, in the ideas, in that sense, that they will have their own life, that they will make, I don't strive for relevance. I try to, to be authentic to those ideas and somehow they, they anchor the work, the, the relevance of the work in a current, whether it's a political or social 
or spiritual context of a place where I'm in, I always feel like it, it, it becomes relevant in that way. From this visual work, uh, black and white, as we've seen, these hypnotic images, slow motion images, we go to This Is Not a Barrel, It's a Resurrection, which is a movie that proposes a very different aesthetic proposal. Let's take a look uh, at a short snapshot of the movie. What's <laughs> It's that it's a whole The colors and the framing. Yeah, you can see it's a format 133. Oh, in the way in which they're is portraying the Mantoa character. I wanted to ask Le Monde that the, the, the mother, there was a more allegory component, whereas here we have this woman who is faces the loss of a loved one, the loss of her son. So I wanted to ask you for the meaning, for the meaning of the mother figure in both movies, because it seems that the perspective is very different, although there are some common common uh, links. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, when I, I just watched this, uh, I just had the 
the dialogue of now the clips that we watched. And I realized one of the mistakes that I made is to the transgression of subtitling in a way in such a that the world will understand it. And um, because we don't use the word burial, we don't use the word burying in this, we, we use a different word for it. And I wish that you could understand in Sisutu. It's such a poetic, amazing language. And I feel like this would be my, it's, it's a transgression that I committed that I try to make it understandable. And after, after, after I've done resurrection, I vowed to not do that again but translate as it is in, in, in Susutu because it's so beautiful. Um, but anyway, the, the, the character of, of mother in, 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 in mother, in mother um, suffocating and also in resurrection, they represent the older generation. And that's why there's always someone who sort of passing the torch or not even the torch in a physical sense, but more like um, so um, they, 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 there is this uh, um, a sequence that I wanted to shoot before it was a parable that I wrote before I wrote Resurrection about about this farmer uh, who is plowing the field under the scorching sun. <laughs> he's, he's, he's plowing the he's plowing the field. In front of him, it's a child pulling the, the, the ox. And the seeds run out when he's sowing. He's sowing seeds. The boy is sowing the seeds. He's sowing the seeds. And suddenly, the back is empty. And this uh, farmer, he, 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 he caved out his eyes. And then he plunged them into the soil. And for me, this image was more like he's, now the, the, the child could see more. It's like he saw his eyes, he could like uh, plant his eyes, that he could have more eyesight to see the world and to be everywhere, to see the creation, to see the formation of humankind, to see, um, to see the stars. So in Lesotho, people even name that cows Jupiter and it's young, but you can only see the young not with the with eye, with the naked eye, but they knew the eye, they knew the other planets. And this is what I felt um, these mothers are doing. It's almost like unmasking. The reason why even the threat around, uh, around her, uh, around this boy that he's sort of weaving something. It's almost like he's weaving the blanket out of the mask that is surrounding this child. It has something to do with seeing. And also even in resurrection at the last sequence, she's looking. Um, and also, even in mother, the 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 quote, it says that I will build the new pair of eyes. It's something to do with seeing, and I'm interested in. Um, um, so, in, in in my work, I I, I speak to, let's say, um, Africans. That's why that's people that I speak with. And the rest of the people, they can listen to my conversation. They are welcome to listen to my conversations. Uh, I think I'm in dialogue for people from Lesotho is my springboard. I'm in dialogue with them. And one thing that I've always been interested in, it's, um, um, it's uh, Ubuntu, um, Moya. In English, you see the English, it's so wrong, it's wrong. Um, it's Ubuntu, use it almost like a soul or Ubuntu or Boto, uh, or, or maybe what they, it's almost like an African consciousness of outside of colonialism. I'm not interested in addressing colonialism, but I'm interested in the picture that we are outside of it, of the, our truest identity as a human beings. And that's my interest. Um, and I think our generation can only paint or sketch it to fully center our identity or to center ourselves. Because also for me, it's very good for me because I learned European cinema before I could learn African cinema, you know, which is a tragedy. 
and I had to I had to use my mother tongue to learn how to use my mother tongue to create, to speak and see through my mother tongue. And I had to learn so many things to, to get to this place. And, and I wanted to be able to paint the picture of what does the mother tongue look like? And this is my main interest. And this is what I want to, uh, to, to paint. That's why I start first now, I feel like in a place of seeing, there must be something that we see. And then I think the work after that, I have a feeling that it, it's, it, it's to do with now drawing the sketches of this image. I give you another parable, um, uh, a, a writing that I, I did. Uh, you imagine um, the fields of, a field that is covered with the broken pieces of the faces, of the clear faces, millions of pieces it's like a bed of million of broken clay faces. And these farmers are deeping in to look for their pieces. They, 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 they try to fit it, but it's not fitting in. And it's bloody. Everything is blood because it's cutting their, their hands. And they try to fit. Their faces are hollow, but they try to find their faces, who they are. And, 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 and for me, this was very, it, it felt like almost even like a very, um, it, 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 this, it, it was so impressing uh, in, my, in, in my spirit, this idea of, of forging something, that they try to forge something, they try to fit it in. And the process of it is very violent. It's what actually even Fanon, when he talks about that, uh, uh, to, this first one, you know, we need to get rid of the parasitic bourgeoisie and it takes a violence to go through that process. It's same, same as giving birth. I think it's same as, as, as the transition. This transition, they, they, they need to, there's a sense of violence that go through the transition. And that's why the, in resurrection, the mother dies. That is a transition. It, it they, 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 they has to be that transition that is very violent. Um, and I believe in that violence in that sense of, of that, the, 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 the travailing of, of the, of the, or Passover, uh, this Passover thing, this going to the other state or other uh, of the site. Um, and it, it's very, that's why even the rapping, it's, it's very, was very, was very important to me. There's one thing that the child said that I never translated it because I think it was for me. There's a point where he says, the sun is cruel because it was under it was strong sun. And then he said, the sun is cruel. And for me, that's the essence of it, that process. It takes that, this process of transition. Um, and the same with the resurrection that goes. So there is a similarity throughout everything. And also in my video installation, um, they are these sons who are washing the body of their father. Almost he's dying or he's dead or he's already dead or he's dying. The idea is to, it was to forge one body with her, with him. They are washing, but the washing for me was sewing their bodies together to create that image I'm talking about, where your leg can be my arm, where the sole of your feet can be my face. I can see through where you walk in, the place you have been. So that's for me, that more stressity of building your spine or, or maybe your neck become my spine, that monstrosity of bodies coming together. And that's the image I'm talking about. That Ubuntu, that's the, that's the soul, I, I, the, the picture I wanna paint. I will have hundreds and I have hundreds of questions, but I think what is important is that you guys make the most of this opportunity. I think we have about 15 minutes so they go, you guys can ask anything that you want. So please raise your hand and ask your question if you have one. Do we have any question here? Hola, muchas gracias. Uh, Me gustaría saber. Hola. 
Hello. Hola, hola, hola. Hola, hola, hola. Hola, hola. Ah, yes. Thank you so much. And I, yes, and I would like to know about your new project, the chattering of teeth. The stage in which it, it, the, the, can you repeat again? Puede repetir la pregunta. Oh, the stage. La etapa. La yes, etapa. yes, yes. Uh, uh, sí. I'm still in, in the writing stage. Todavía estoy redactando. I'm still in the writing stage and also a, a bit of research. Um, when I was in Basel, I saw a painting. Um, it, it's called. I forgot the the name of this painter. Recht. Recht is called the Newton the Staircase. And, uh, and when I saw this painting, for the first time, I was interested in the character. I was not interested in the framing, or whether it's a painting, or whether it's a collage, or whether it's, the, it's, 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 it's a steal from the film. It, it looked like everything. And then and, and somehow it changed my approach. I, I'm trying a new approach with chattering. Um, that because I start to understand that I'm more interested in ideas than language. I, 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 the language, it, I think it's perishable. And, and, and even with, with essay, I think I was, the, 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 I, I, I'm very, I, I see visual, I, I see in pictures. So the aesthetics will always be there, but it's not really my interest at this point. I, 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 I think I'm more into ideas, into, I think they, they, they are one, the ones that are somehow forever, the observations to life. So this is my approach now to the new work. Más preguntas? Hay una por aquí. Eh, bueno, buenos días. Eh, solamente eh, darle las gracias por haber, por haber compartido en estos minutos las fuentes de su inspiración o parte de ella. Y solo decir que estoy tan deslumbrado como por las películas y que no... that you thought Porque they were falling un, short because un de, de it's just such a stream of experiences and concepts that I see that you want to convey into your movie making that, as I said, I'm mesmerized. You know, I'm impressed by you. Thank you very much. ¿Alguna pregunta más? Aquí. Sí, aquí delante tenemos. We got another question here, up here. Hola. Hello. Vale. Hi. Um, I... No quiero hablar en inglés, perdón, porque él habla inglés, lo quiero. Perdón. Um, so I'd like to ask you, because I lived in Berlin as well, and I know it's an unusual place. I had a love-hate relationship with Berlin, um, and I'd be interested to know how this city influences your work, because when I listen to you, I feel that there is an element of this, maybe this um, heaviness or the complexity. Do you basically, to make the question simple, uh, the last 10 years you've been in this complex city, you know, that has so many centers, so um, um, deep. Do you think your work would be perhaps different if you lived in Spain the last 10 years or somewhere else? Do you see a direct link to your creation with where you are now?
be the same because I think once you create from well once you create as an outsider your work will change I think it would be the same as if I was maybe in, in Syria for instance creating from Syria or creating from um, from Chile you approach somehow or in, maybe the agency of creating would will definitely change because now you see it as an outsider yeah so i think i mean berlin it's, it's, it's great because you have we have a, a bit of a bubble we live in a bubble um and this bubble of creating of talking about uh, beauty it's great it's safe it's a safe space in that way so i think a part of it is friends that you have and i think yeah it's pretty much um it changes it changes the way you see the world uh once you are outsider yeah yeah but of course in, in a way uh my experience uh maybe they differ from one person to another and I'm not sure if you were referring that I'm a black body living in Europe or as an artist. So it's it's totally different dynamics, you know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Any other question? Okay. So to conclude. I wanted to ask you one last question, Lemon, with regards to your collaboration process with your technical team and the artistic team. More specifically, I wanted to ask you about, just with the aim of knowing better your creative process, when you work with South African actress Mary Dualan in this creation of the Char wonderful character of Mantua. I wanted to know to which extent you're a director that gives very precise indications to the actors and actresses, or you leave them a lot of margin for them to build their own character. If you prefer to have very preconceived idea, or you like to leave room for improvisation, what, what, what's your approach? Mm. I, 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 I looked at it as a when I looked at uh, the Mary uh, character of Mantua, I looked at someone who f it felt like this this habilist or this um, person who dreamed, this dreamer who you goes to the marketplace and has something to say or something to show people. I feel like that's how, for me, Mary was. It looks like a big canvas. All you do in the marketplace just to do this and show the people that he is, she is the canvas. Um, the, the tone of her skin is a canvas. The, the way she looks, her eyes, everything is a canvas. And that's, I'm not necessarily interested in, in acting. Um, and everybody in the, in, in the village who took part in the film is because of how they were looking that I felt like they would transport certain ideas of, uh, of our observations. And some of the characters are molded based on Moto Moto, the man who used to sing with the with the, with the throat. So it's it's specifically for how they look that I feel like they they can mirror the ideas that I have, and and also with Mary, um, we we talked about um, the the character because she she comes from the television, she comes from very animation acting. In South Africa, that's what um, it, it's laughed. This kind of acting, it, it's very laughed that you are animated. But for me, it's it's opposite. So it was almost it was a bit of a challenge to tell an actor not to act. I mean, it's it was a bit of a of a, of a, of a thing. But after some time, I think he got the language. And many people, maybe let's say eighty percent, didn't even understand the, the story in that way because most of the time it's a fragment of the script. It's a full script. So for me, it was not necessarily that I wanted to be as human as, 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 as to fit into the village as possible. 
not create something that is extra, but the idea, the work that I had to do is to strip down their preconceived ideas of what the role is about. Bueno. Okay, we have to leave it here, but don't worry. Lemon is a wonderful guy that you can talk to later. He's going to be here till Saturday. So make the most of it, ask him a whole bunch of questions. I want to thank once again the festival for this marvelous uh, invitation of having Lemon here to talk about his movie making in depth. And that's it. Thank you very much. Please, uh, an, an applause to Lemon, and that's it.